Hey, this is Jerry from Bliss Studio, and in this particular tutorial, I'm going to ask for your help. I want you to give me your thoughts and your ideas down in the comments below. So what is it I'm going to be doing? I'm going to use the new input system, and I'm gonna set that up, and I have a world that I've built, and then we're going to rotate that world based off of the input from our input system. And with this mechanic, what kind of game can I create out of that? And I'm gonna create a prototype based off of your input. And if you're ready to get started, let's go. Okay, so here I am in Unity. And again, I am going to have you all help me try to figure out what to do with this prototype. Now, this is basically meant to be a tutorial on showing how to use the new input system and to rotate the scheme object, but what kind of game can we make out of it? I'm asking you to add some comments down below on what kind of game I could make out of this. I wanna pick the very best of those ideas and then maybe make a prototype based off of that. So using this mechanic, what can we do? Okay, so here we go. I currently have just this empty game object that is a 20 by 20 by 20 sphere and then with a dark background intended to be some kind of a planet but it could be anything i could make this in a cube i could make it whatever but i'm going to go ahead and just to show what i can do with this i'm going to go ahead and select this world and i'm going to use polybrush polybrush is a really nice package that you can use to kind of create worlds so what i'm going to do is go to the scatterbrush tool and with that, it's asking me for a prefab. I already have a prefab of a rock. I'm going to go ahead and just drop that down in my palette. I'm going to go ahead and just select it. And then I can go ahead and also do some scaling. And I'm going to change the range of scale based off of this. I'm also going to change some rotation. This is based off of the game object's original rotation. So we'll go ahead and maybe just do that from zero to 360. Then I can actually just paint this prefab right on my sphere. So with that selected, let's go ahead and do this in game view. And you can see I've got my poly brush little brush and I can now just start brushing out rocks. Now I do have the problem where the rocks are floating off the planet and that could be something that you would want, but I don't necessarily like that. So to fix that, you got the option of use pivot. So I'm gonna go ahead and have that checked. And then when I start painting out, these rocks are now on the surface. So let me go ahead and just paint these out real quick, just so we have something to see. Now I'm only doing this just to really show that we're rotating this planet and just to have something to look at, but you kind of get the idea. So there we go. We now have a planet occupied with some rocks. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and use the new input system to be able to rotate this. So what is the new input system? So in the new input system, the way we're gonna get to that is due to package manager, open the package manager. And then if you just type in input, that will be the only option that pops up. So you'll install that. When you create a new game and then you input this, it's actually going to quit the editor and then reopen the editor with the new input system as your input. How do we get, how do we use the input system? What we need to do is to go ahead and create a new input actions. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and call this world mover. And if I double click on it, you get this world mover input action window. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up the control schemes. Now what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to go ahead and add a control scheme and then I can go ahead and name it. I'm gonna go ahead and just name this keyboard and mouse. That's what I'm working with at the moment. And then I also need to add those inputs. So I'm gonna choose keyboard. Then I'm also gonna choose mouse. Go ahead and add that. So I need to go ahead and set these up for my mover. So I'm gonna go ahead and just call this world mover. These actions I'm gonna specifically tie to keys. So here we go, I want to set up my first action. And with this, I'm gonna go ahead and call this up. Okay, so I, now that I have that named as up, I need to choose what type of action this is. So you can see that we've got three different options here, value, button, and pass through. In this case, we want to use the button. And then also interaction. I want to be able to determine if I've pressed a button down and if I've released a button. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is to also add a press interaction. 
and then by default it is press only so if I want to be able to to check the release of a button I need to select this as press and release and now I'm just gonna leave everything else by default so now the key that we're gonna tie this to to do this I'm gonna go ahead and just go to my path and then we've got this little listen button right here so I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna actually hit my up arrow and then you can see my arrow pops up and I add that. Now I can also add more keys to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new binding. And in this case, if I do the up arrow, I also wanna do the, the W key so that we can use that as up action as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another listen and hit my W key and there we go. So now if we do a string of up, it's going to use both of these keys. It's going to listen for both of those keys. Let's go ahead and add another action, and this one is going to be down. Same thing, uh, I need to add the interaction of press and both press and release. Then I'm going to add the actions for my down key and my S key. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this real quick, doing this for up, down, left, and right, and then I will be right back. Okay, so now I have all this set up. I can go ahead and close out of this. So just make sure that you have either saved or I have auto save selected so that it's automatically saving. Okay, so we have our interactions here. Now let's go ahead and move over to Playmaker. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new empty game object. I'm gonna call this Game Manager. And then what I want to do with this is to add a Playmaker FSM. So I'm gonna add a Playmaker FSM. And I first want to label this Playmaker FSM because we're going to have multiple FSMs. I'm going to call this up and down, okay? And then with that, what is it we want to do? Well, we want to listen to a button press that's from the new input system. So we're going to listen for input, all right? And now what kind of input is it we're going to listen to? Well, if you look in the Playmaker actions, we've got player input. And in this case, I'm gonna use player input button events. So I'm gonna choose that. I also need to make sure that there is a input system manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add that. And then with that, we also need to choose where we're getting our actions. So if we click on the actions option here, we can see that we have world mover. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And it knows to go to that input actions manager to pull those actions, okay? Cool, now that we have that set up, with our player button, I need to determine which buttons that I want to use. Well, I want to use my up buttons, okay? Which is uh, both the W key and the up arrow key. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose one of those. And you can see I have those four here and you can't necessarily read the full name, but if you just select it, you can see the name down in the description below here. So I need to choose my up, which is the very last one, and go ahead and that's the button I'm gonna listen for, all right? So in this case, it, we're gonna listen for an is pressed event. So I'm gonna go ahead and perform a transition and this event is going to be up, okay? Go ahead and click that and add that. I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this real quick because we also want to listen for the down key. Again, so I need to choose which input action we're listening for. And this is going to be the very first one here, down. And then instead of is pressed event up, we want to do a new event for down. Go ahead and add that transition and we are good. So let's go ahead and go off to new states for these. So I'm going to take these transition, drag off to new states for each. And in this first one, I'm going to call this up and the second one down. All right, so what is it I wanna do with this? I actually want to rotate this globe or this world, okay? So what I wanna do here is in my up, I'm gonna go ahead and choose rotate. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that rotate and we need to determine which got game object we're gonna rotate. In this case, we are going to rotate our world. And then I want to rotate it on the X axis so we're moving towards the player or uh, away from the player on the X angle axis. And I'm gonna choose this to be about 20. And you can play with this number to see how fast you like it. The space we're gonna choose to have this as world space instead of local space. 
and then we're also going to choose per second. So I have this rotating on a positive 20. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just copy this. I'm going to go over to my down. And then if we're moving um, up, we just in our down state, we just want to move a negative 20. Everything else is the same. Okay, so if we are listening for our button press on the first one, what we need to do is do a if we have released that button to stop the action. So in this case, we are going to also listen for a player input button event. So I'm just going to copy that um, one that goes to the left or up. And I'm going to paste that player event back down. And then uh, we're going to choose uh, is pressed event. We're going to choose none there because what we want to do is to check to see if we have released a button. So in this case, I want to do a new event of stop add that transition and go back okay and we need to make sure that we are listening for our up input here okay i'm going to go ahead and just copy this and paste it over into my down and in this case we aren't listening for our up key we're listening for the down key so i need to make sure i have the right action applied it gets us back to our input so i'm going to go ahead and just add that transition and now we should be able to give it a test so let's go ahead and hit play so there we go, we are rotating up, I'm hitting my down key, and now we are rotating down. Cool, so now let's do the same thing with the left and the right. Now I'm not gonna do it in this particular one because I wanna be able to move left and up at the same time, or vice versa. So what I need to do is to add another Playmaker FSM. So as opposed to starting this all over again, I can easily just duplicate this Playmaker FSM and then reuse it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose to copy component. And I'm gonna right click where it says Playmaker FSM there and copy component as new. Okay, so instead of up and down, this is gonna be left and right. Cool, so let's go ahead and go over to our left and right Playmaker FSM. Now I need to go ahead and change this from being up and down on left and right. So let's change our events first. So down, I'm gonna go ahead and just tie that to my right and then up, I'm gonna go ahead and just change that to left. And so now I have those two changed. And so they change here in my transitions as well. So that is all good. Then in our input, we need to change these from being our up and down actions to be our left and right actions. So in the first one, I'm gonna go ahead and choose left. And that is this particular one. And then on the bottom one, it's going to be our right. Okay, then I also need to do the same thing with our states. I'm gonna choose this to be left, hit return. And then we want to, instead of moving on the X axis, we're gonna go ahead and rotate this on the Y axis. So this is gonna be a positive 20. And then I also need to, if I released my left button, so I need to change the action out here to left. And then I just need to go and do the same thing with the right. So here we go in this state, we're gonna call this right. And we're gonna do negative 20 on the Y axis. So negative 20 and world space every frame. And then we need to choose our action here, which is our right. Now let's give this a test. Still able to move up and down. And now I'm able to move left and right. And I'm able to do both of those at the same time. What kind of a game can we make out of this? This is the question that I have for you. Now, as you think about that and get ready to write your comments down in the, the comments below, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of UI so that we can add a little bit of flavor to this. So I'm gonna go and add a new UI and I'm gonna go ahead and add a new image, which also adds a canvas. Let's go ahead and get this canvas set up real quick. And the canvas, I want to have it be a scale with screen size. I'm gonna go ahead and just choose 1920 by 1080 as the resolution. And the screen match mode, I'm gonna have it expand. And I need to go ahead and then choose that image. And we need to put something in there. Now I already have some sprites in here. I have both an arrow with an outline and an arrow that is solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose my outline arrow first off. And let's just make sure this is on our canvas. So let's go ahead and zoom out 
to where that image is and it looks like it's off of our canvas. Let's go ahead and turn our gizmos on so we can see where our canvas is. And I'm just gonna move this into the upper left hand corner. So, or upper right hand corner. So I'm gonna move that up there. I might go ahead and just make it a little bit smaller. And the, should be about 80, something like that. We'll see what that looks like in game. Oh, a little bit too big, I think. So let's go ahead and scale this down proportionally here. I wanna make that just a little bit smaller. And then I wanna change the color as well here. So I'm gonna change the color to be a little bit on an orangey yellow side. And that looks pretty good. That goes with our purple planet. All right, now with that done, let's go ahead and just give this a name first. So I'm gonna call this up arrow. And I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this real quick and add the up, left, right, and down. Yeah, something like that. So that looks pretty good. I need to go ahead and give the user some feedback. So if they're moving up, I want to highlight one of these arrows. Or if they're moving up and left, I wanna highlight those two arrows. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my game manager and I can handle the, all of this right here with my left and right and up and down FSMs. So in this case, if we move left, I want to change and highlight my left arrow. So the way I'm gonna do that is to just take my left arrow, I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that down into my left state. And then I wanna change image, UI, and then I'm gonna to choose to have UI graphics set color. Okay, so we're gonna change that color to just be white. Cool, so that will work. Now, in, in this case, if I do that, I need to also be able to set it back to be being the original color. And I'm gonna do that right here in the listen for input. So when we go back to listen for input, we want to go ahead and set that back to its original color. So let's just grab that real quick. And I'm gonna choose that color here real quick. And I actually have that already in my swatches. And then I just need to do the same thing with all the rest of these real quick. And there we go. So let's go ahead and give this a test real quick. And my arrows now should highlight when I'm hitting my up and left key or down and right key so that we can see the input of the, the move. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And now you can see that my arrows light up based off of what keys I have input. And there you go. Now the question is, what kind of game can I make out of this? Put your ideas down in the comments below and I'm gonna choose one or two of those and make a prototype based off of that. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and it's something you can use for your game. I'm looking forward to seeing the comments down below so that we can see what kind of game we can create together. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.